So, we are starting for the next, I don't know, 20 or so weeks. We're going to be learning from the book of Romans. Romans, the book of Romans, is in the Bible. Does anybody know the order of the books starting in the New Testament? Starts with Matthew. What comes after Matthew? Raise your hand if you know what book comes after Matthew. Okay? If you have your hand up, say the, what comes after Matthew. Mark. 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 Okay, Matthew, Mark. Luke. 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 Don't say it. Next, The next one after Luke comes. Raise your hand if you know. So Matthew, Mark, Luke. John. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Acts. Next, Acts. And after Acts Rome. is Romans. Romans is a very big book. It's not bigger than, it's not the biggest book in the New Testament, but it's the biggest, um, it's the biggest letter in the New Testament. There was a certain man who wrote the book of Romans. Well, God wrote the book, but God used this man here to write the book of Romans. And Romans tells us about the righteousness of God. Now, there's a lot of big words that we're going to be learning, but hopefully we can learn them and know what they mean. So, can anybody figure out a word, a short word that's part of this big word, righteous? A short word that's part of the big right. word, righteousness, or right. righteous? Righteous. Um, Allie? Right. Right. Correct. Right. So, if we're, if the book of Romans, Romans tells us about the righteousness of God, it's telling us about how God is right. God is always right, isn't he? Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes Mrs. Goldman is right. Most of the time, Mrs. Goldman is right. But not all the time. But God is always right. God is always right. And we're going to learn that God does something that we might not like or other people don't like. But just because they don't like it doesn't mean it's not right. In fact, it is right because God did it. God is right to condemn. And that's what we're going to learn about today. God is right to justify. Yes. God is right to sanctify. God is right to choose. And because he's right, we should live a certain way. So God is always right because he's righteous. Now, we're going to learn about the word condemn today. I want you to imagine in your head, let's see here, let's just say Moses went into the house and there was a big bunch of bananas there. Big bunch of bananas. And Moses' mom said to him, here Moses, you can have a banana. There's a bunch here, and I'm going to give the rest to some other people that live down the street, but you can have one. Okay? So Moses eats his banana, and he goes back in the house a little bit later, and nobody's around, and there's a big bunch of bananas, and he's like, I like bananas. So he takes two more. And just because, so no one would see him, he puts them inside his shirt. Puts them inside his shirt. Now, Moses' mom comes back later and sees bananas missing. And what does she know? She says, Moses, get in here. You took the bananas. Did she know? Did she, how, how, did, how did she know? She didn't see. She didn't see. Not yet. She didn't see. She just knew. And she said, Moses, you are guilty. She declared Moses guilty. And Moses walked in, and what did he have under his shirt? She said, what's down there? And she proved it, right? She proved it. So she told him he's guilty. She declared him guilty. Then she proved it by showing that he had the bananas. And then what do you think she did after that? We're, we're imagining. She, a punishment. And maybe this time she said something like, we're going to have pizza for supper, and because you took the bananas, 
You're not having pizza with the rest of the family. That's a punishment, right? So when God condemns, or when anybody condemns, condemn can mean three things. It can mean, one, you're guilty. Right? She just said, Moses, you took him. You're guilty. And two, it can mean proved guilty. She proved it, right? Because he had, he had the bananas. Then, she said, your punishment. So all of those are part of condemn. Now, it's not bananas with God, is it? But God says to everybody in the world, you're guilty. In Romans, the book that we're studying, he says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then he proves that they're guilty. And we don't have time to look at all those verses, but every single person knows that they're a sinner, don't you? If you've ever done something, your parents told you to do something, one of your parents told you to do something, and you did something else, or you didn't do it, that's disobeying, right? And disobeying is sin. It's sin. If you lied about something, lying is sin. Stealing is sin. So, God says we're all sinners. He can easily prove we're all sinners. And then in Romans it says the wages of sin... The punishment for sin is death. We're going to learn a bunch about all of those, but today, before we finish, we're going to just talk about this just a little bit. Our verse says, He that believeth on him. So he that believes on him, who's him? The only begotten Son of God. Who's that? Jesus. He that believes on Jesus is not condemned. Well, that's where we want to be, right? We don't want to be condemned. But he that believes not, he that doesn't believe, is condemned already. So, we learned a little ways back, I'm going to remind you about all the early Christians. Right after Jesus, well, soon after Jesus went up into heaven, they were upstairs and they were praying together. And then they heard a sound and they saw what looked like flames of fire. And the Holy Spirit came on them, and they went out, and they were telling people all the wonderful things about God. Does anybody remember on that day what was special? What was different about, as they were talking in their own language, what happened? Allie, do you remember what happened? Everyone spoke their own language that everyone could understand. In a different language, yes. People from other parts of the world were there. And they could hear it in their own language, what they said, the language that they used in the other parts of the world. So that was a very special day, and a lot of people got saved. And then a little bit while later, a lot more people got saved. And all the way along, day after day after day, people were getting saved, and pretty soon there was more people that were needing to learn from the apostles than there was enough apostles to tell. And so they got some men to help them. They got seven men to help them. And one of those men that helped them, his name was Stephen. We talked about Stephen already. One, and, and besides helping pass out the food and everything, Stephen began to preach. And when he preached about Jesus, people could not confuse him. They didn't, if they didn't agree with him, they would argue with him, but they would lose their arguments because he was telling the truth, and one man, and a bunch of others that did not like what Stephen was saying, name was Saul. And Saul and some of his friends said, this guy is bad news. They, what did they do? They condemned him, condemned him. They said, he is not doing what's right. Now, they, were, they didn't have any proof, did they? No proof, but they condemned, condemned him. And so they caught him, and they lied about him, and pretty soon they dragged him outside the city, and they threw great stones on him, and they killed him. So, what did they condemn him? Can, I'm getting this first place. They condemned him, they said he was guilty, and then they killed him, right? They punished him, but they didn't have any proof, did they? They didn't have any 
study proof, and you see this guy here? This is Saul. He was a part of it. He said, yep, yeah, he's guilty. He didn't have proof. They lied about him. But they still punished him. Now this guy, not long after that, he was traveling himself to go find more people like Stephen, more Christians. And he thought, well, I'm going to go to this other city, Damascus, find Christians there, and I'm going to grab them and put them in jail and drag them back because they're just as guilty as Stephen. Did he have proof? No, he didn't have proof, but he had condemned, condemned them, and he wanted to punish them. But on his way, what happened to him? It's in the picture here, do you remember what happened to this man? What this picture is showing us? I don't know. He was blinded by what? God. How? A light. A bright, bright light came from heaven. And a voice came from heaven. And said, Saul, it is hard for you. Why are you persecuting me? Oh, so that voice just did what? That voice just condemned him, didn't he? He said, you are guilty of persecuting me. Did he need proof? What was, what was this man doing right then? He was on his way to go capture Christians and put them in jail. He had just watched while other men killed a Christian. So was there proof? Yes, there was proof. And the voice from heaven was who? God. God's only begotten son, whose name is? Jesus. The voice from heaven was Jesus. So the voice from heaven said, you're guilty. He was proved guilty. Do you think he got punished? Yes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Our verse says, he that believes on him is not condemned. Did, did, did Saul believe on Jesus right then? He did it. Because so he, is, he that believeth not is condemned already. So he was condemned, wasn't he? He was already condemned because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But right then, right then, right here, while he's on the ground, you know what he said? He said, Lord, what will you have me to do? So now, does he believe in Jesus now? He must, because he's talking to Jesus and he's calling him Lord, right? At first, he was going to persecute Christians. He gets knocked off. He gets told that he's guilty. He's proved guilty. But you know what? No punishment. No punishment. A little bit later, he was, the, the Jesus from heaven said, go into the town. Another Christian man came, right? And talked to him. And he received his sight back, and right away he got baptized to show that he was a follower of Jesus. And so this man, a little bit later, he started going by the name of Saul. Saul. Brethren. I know it. Aurora, do you know? John. No, not John. His name was Saul. And a little bit later, he started going by the name of Paul. 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 Right? And so Paul, Paul here, who wrote the book of Romans? Paul. Paul knew what it, what it meant to condemn somebody. He was part of the men that condemned Stephen, right? He knew what it meant to condemn people, somebody without proof. But he also knew what it meant to be condemned. But he knew that if you believe on the name of the Son of God, like he did on the road to Damascus, you could be moved from being condemned to being not condemned. Okay, so this is a big word. It's not a word we use very much in school or from day to day. But condemned means you're guilty, you're proved guilty, and you have a punishment. And this verse says, everybody that has not believed is already condemned. Everybody has. Why is everybody condemned already? Have they sinned? Yes. 
Everybody has sinned, so they're condemned. They're guilty, they're proved guilty, and what is the punishment? What is the punishment for those that are guilty of sin? Death. The wages of sin is death. And that death means separation from God, and any place that is totally empty of God is hell. The place that is totally empty, there's no God at all there, is hell. It's an awful, awful place. But, there are some people that are not condemned. Who are the people that are not condemned? Is it the people that give lots of money to the church? Nope. Is it the people that, um, I don't know, is it the people that pray certain, certain words over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? No. Who, who are the people that are not condemned? Who are the people in our verse that are not not condemned? Who is not condemned? Alistair? Um, no, there's no brethren. In I can't see that. Right, well, you're a little far away, right? So brethren was at the beginning of our last verse. So who are the people that are not condemned? Aurora? He that believeth. And who do you have to believe on? Believe in? The name. Of the only begotten Son of God. And the only begotten Son of God has lots of names. He's the Christ. He's Jesus. He's the Son of Man. He's the Son of God. He's the only begotten Son of God. So believing in Jesus, Jesus is the Lord, right? He's the Creator. Believing in Jesus makes it so that you're not condemned. Right? But if you don't believe in Jesus, you are already condemned. You're guilty, you sin, and you have punishment coming. We're going to learn a little bit more about condemnation. Condemnation. Each of the next three weeks.